Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we are currently working on Robin Pattinell's reuse, reuse, recycle, RUD station. And I think today we're going to work on the science module. So we're going to take this booster here. We're just going to reuse this booster for the sake of time. We're going to ditch everything up here. And I think we'll start this with our root part being, well, we really should use a pod here. So we'll use a Probodobodyne Octo 2. And I think we're going to attach that a little bit differently than we have been. So here's the idea. We're going to attach that directly to a fuel tank like this. Then we're going to attach that into a poodle. Because I said that I wanted to have zero space junk, right? So we're going to do something like that. And then we're going to dock this. Not like that. We're going to dock this. And not with a junior. We should probably use a regular docking port. A, a full-size docking port here for this. And I think we're going to use full-size docking ports for all of this. I need to duplicate this. There we go. <laughs> that would help. So we're going to have this be docked together like so. Then we're going to make our science module here. And what is this going to be? Well, we know this needs to be a science slash habitation module. So we're going to put in, for right now, we're going to put in habitation, I think. So under utility, the best we can do is a hitchhiker storage container, which can contain four. So I think we'll put in two of these. That'll be all of the habitation that we need for this. Then we're going to put in our science components. So we're going to put in a mobile processing lab like that. And then on top of that, we're going to put in a payload bay. So we're going to put in a 2.5 meter, 2.5 meter service bay here. And the question is, are we going to have this be... Mm. We don't need batteries here. But we can put some in. We don't, strictly speaking, need them. But we can do something along the lines of this on the bottom. Cool. And I want to grab our root part here and bring this down a little bit because I can't actually scroll up higher. So I want to be focused up here for right now. We want to put in a few science components here, of course. Basically, all of our extant experiments. So we want to put in the barometer. We want to put in the thermometer. We want to put in the mystery goo containment unit. We want to put in, what else do we have here? Science Junior, and is that it? Just attach a Science Junior up there like that. I guess that can work. Okay, uh, we do have inventory slots here. So I do wanna put things in here. I know that the contract says that we need EVA re repair kits. We're going to do the EVA repair kits in the operations section, I think. So for now, we're going to put in strut connectors, and we can only fit in, I believe, eight of these here. But that should be sufficient for our our current needs. We're going to get some, some of those in here. Eventually, we'll probably want to put in some, like, EVA science kits. Do we have access to those yet? Maybe not. For now, we'll just put in those struts, and we do want to make sure that we have our two scientists in here. So we want that to be Kelson and Melfort, and we'll keep them in the processing lab. There we go. Now, this is not very aerodynamic up here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a tiny, tiny little fairing here. So we're going to move the Science Junior, and we're going to put in a fairing that basically just surrounds the Science Junior. Uh, for now, I don't want to build it. But we put the Science Junior here, and now we'll build the fairing. And it can be something kind of like that. Just a very, very small fairing that makes us a little bit more aerodynamic here. Now, obviously, this is not going to be a very strong joint. And I want to grab strut connectors. We're going to put in eight of them. They're going to connect like so. So that'll reinforce that, and that'll be what we attach up here. Although this is going to need a docking port. That would help. We are going to put in a docking port up top. And I want to rebuild the fairing with that. I want to edit this fairing and back this off slightly. Like that. 
There we go. That's a little bit better. We don't need additional comms on here. We're good on power. We should probably have at least a little bit of power generation. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in quad photovoltaic panels, and we'll do that about here. This is not our primary power generation. Keep that in mind. This is only photovoltaic panels to power this area a little bit. It's not going to fully power this by any means. So then we take all of that and we attach this. Now I have questions about uh, how, how well we're going to lift this. I expect that this might actually be a little bit less heavy than our previous one. And I'm going to call this, of course, not the station core. Uh, there we go. Not the station core, but the station science module. There we go. And how heavy is this? This is a weight of 213 pounds. We'll call it 214. We'll round that up. And yeah, save that. That's fine. And I want to grab the station core here. 223. Okay, that's very, very interesting indeed. So this is indeed lighter, and I'm not super shocked about that. Does that mean that we can cut down on these boosters a little bit? Yes, indeed it does. I want to target 1.6 for our thrust to weight here. So that's like 83.5, 85. Yeah, 85 will do. And I do also want to run a strut from here up to here, just to solidify this joint a little bit. I have a feeling we're going to have some awkwardness here, but the idea is that we dock up like this. Oh, uh, there's one additional component that I wanted to add in up here, and that is specifically, I want to put in an RCS tank, and I want to have some RCS thrusters on here. We do need some storage for, for monoprop, although there will be more storage for monoprop in our operations. This is more used for the docking procedure. And I want to get some RCS thruster blocks on here. I'm going to put four of them mounted like that. Cool. That, of course, means that we're going to need to edit this fairing. And we'll do something along the lines of that. It's not much of a fairing, but it's just to protect this little area and make sure that... Uh, how heavy is that fairing? Well, 214 tons. So yeah, it's, it's not very heavy. Now the main question is one of structural stability. This is a much taller rocket. So I think that we should probably consider adding in center of mass overlay here and adding in tail fins. So these tail fins are mostly just to act as a control surface, right? I think this needs to be more like that. Yeah, that'll do. So that'll just give us a little bit more control going up through the atmosphere. I think that's going to be important and that'll stabilize us a little bit. This is going to be a very, very long rocket in comparison to the other one. But this section is similarly sized. Now note that there is no docking ports on the sides of this, that is deliberate, but there is this docking port at the end if we want to extend this out further. So it, it'll be extendable in this direction, but this is not intended to extend in horizontal directions here. So that's going to be the idea for our science module. I think that'll do for now. Double checking that our crew didn't get reset and it did. So we want to put in Kelson and Melfort. We'll put them in the mobile processing lab. Now the question is, is this thing going to be stable through the atmosphere? I suspect it will. But let's launch this. We're going to do our operations launch after this. And the operations launch is going to be... Well, well, we'll have to do a little bit more work on the operations section. I want a little bit heavier power generation there. I want to be able to do fuel conversion there if we bring any ore. I don't know if we will or not, but I want the capacity. 
but we can get to that design stage later. For now, we need to do this. I want to double check our staging. I probably should have done that earlier. This fairing will probably manually deploy. And the rest of this staging looks okay. Yeah, no major problems there. Cool. So off we go. So far, no major stability issues, but if there were any at this stage, I would be terrified. Absolutely terrified, but I'm not expecting major stability issues. Let's bring this on over and start getting some horizontal speed. Cool. And of course, we need to flip over into maneuver mode here to keep an eye on our apoapsis. That'll be fine for now. The SRBs, again, are mostly intended for punching up through the atmosphere. Okay. We're going to hang out here. It's starting to feel slightly tippy. So we're going to hang out here and lock to prograde. How long do we have on these SRBs? About 26 seconds here. Looks good. Time to apoapsis is increasing nicely. I think we're fine to just hang out here at the apoapsis. And correcting our heading a little bit here. But that will get corrected by our docking procedure, right? So that's absolutely fine. And this is why we have the fairing. Cool. SRBs are going to be detaching in approximately six seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. SRBs are clear. Now we're heading down to the horizon. We are pretty good on our apoapsis, actually. We have quite a lot of speed here. We need horizontal speed at this moment. We had some excellent thrust to weight there through the atmosphere. I like it. So we're just going to burn here purely horizontal. We can ditch our fairing at this stage. We do not need it anymore. And we've only got about 15 seconds of burn left in this engine, but that's fine. We can see our apoapsis is at 250 now. So we're just going to coast here up to 250. It's actually kind of close. Uh, that wasn't necessarily the goal. <laughs> Realistically, we shouldn't have targeted 250. Um... Yeah, that's interesting. We're going to be a little bit behind it. But we can simply add a maneuver here and enter an orbit. I'm wondering what this will look like. Yeah, we're a little bit behind. So I think that we should enter an orbit that's a little bit more akin to this one. Yeah, I should have targeted a bit lower of an orbit here, not 250. That's my own fault. We can extend our solar panels at this point. And if we need to, I mean, we've got plenty of Delta V, right? We can definitely drop that if we if we feel like it would be useful, which it may or may not be. Now we're having a hard time turning this whole contraption. No shockers there. I'm going to time warp us, and we're going to start turning on over this direction. All we've got is this tiny, tiny little reaction wheel here. We could also RCS. That is an option. And let's do it. Let's use some RCS power here. There we go. Cool. And yeah, we definitely could aim for more like 200 kilometers. And then drop down over here and do our intercept that way. That's probably an easier way to do it, now that I think about it. So we should have targeted 200 to begin with, if we're going to do it this way. But something along the lines of that will do. And this burn will be starting in about five minutes. We're going to definitely... Actually, almost all of this is from this. That's remarkable. But we're going to start our warp here shortly. I'm just using RCS to get us more into position here. And that's close enough. So let's warp here a bit. Cool. Warping a bit further. 20 seconds. 10, and 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 
mark. Oh, this thing likes to wiggle around all of a sudden. Okay. Let's just hold it right about here for now. Should be easier once we ditch this. Cool. Yeah, that's way easier. Okay, watching this periapsis here. Looking for 200. There we go. Now, eventually, we'd probably rendezvous here. But I'm going to go to the periapsis. Again, I should have initially targeted 200 here. We're just going to circularize here. It's not the most efficient way to do this, but it is a very simple way to get this done. How are we turning with just this reaction wheel? This has a built-in reaction wheel, right? Actually, it doesn't. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I thought it did. But nope. All we've got is RCS. That's okay. We can, we can work with that. So we're going to warp here. How much RCS do we have left? Oh, lots. We, we've used five monoprop thus far. So that's fine. Cool. So this is, of course, going to be a retrograde burn. Only about a three-second burn. We're going to continue to warp forward a bit here. Three, two, one, mark. Okay, that'll do. From here, we'll be able to intercept much more easily. So... I want to check our descending node. Okay, we should probably fix our inclination. It's not very off, but it's off. An well, actually, I don't think we even need to do it, to be honest. We can just rendezvous like this. So what would it look like if we were to rendezvous here? Okay, timing isn't ideal. However, over here, that looks pretty good. That's a separation of 1.3 kilometers. Looks like that's about the best we're going to get. It is good enough. Cool. So I want to point at anti-target right now. We actually can't do that. Let's just head over to retrograde. I'm actually... I, I can't believe that I just assumed that this had a reaction wheel in it. It does not. <laughs> okay. I wanted to be on retrograde. Or very close to it. Cool. And this debris, uh, that's in orbit, isn't it? I'm not sure. Is that in orbit? I forgot about that. That debris may or may not be in orbit. This is intended, of course, to be detached and deorbited once we get once we get set up. Okay. Let's warp here for now. And we're going to make our way on around. Commencing this burn in about seven minutes. Two minutes. So that's about one minute away right now. 20 seconds. 10 seconds. And three, two, one, mark. That should be good enough. How are we looking? Separation of 5.8 kilometers. Uh, we can tune that in a little bit. There, that's as good as we're going to get for now. Now, we can't point at targets. So, for the time being, we should warp over to here. Like, virtually to the apoapsis. Relative speed of that. Okay, sure. We're going to hop over to target retrograde here. And we're just going to slowly ease our way in. Okay. We're going to need to flip around. We see it's physics loaded now. So we're going to flip right on around here. Having to use RCS does make this a little bit more awkward. I definitely intended to include a reaction wheel in it, but there is not one. So we're just very slowly monopropping our way over. Cool. And we can see our retrograde marker is not very close to the target marker, which is a little sad. But let's just uh, slow this on down a bit. I'm going to turn off the RCS right now since we're using gimbling. And let's just gently slow this on down. Cool. 10 meters per second. Five. Okay, RCS back on for the moment. We 
We'll call that good enough. So now we need to get closer, right? We need to point towards the target. So we're going to rotate over this direction. Oh, hello. Look at that. We're already virtually heading there. I can actually turn SAS off. And we can do something like that. But we need to be pointed at the target, right? So we're going to do exactly that. We're going to look to point at the target here. SAS is off. And we're going to be doing this manually. Okay. We're freezing physics there. Okay. Freezing physics. That's good enough for now. For the moment. Just making slight adjustments here. Cool. And we're just slowly drifting into position. With very, very minor RCS adjustments. Okay. We'll call this good for now. And we'll bring this on in about like that. Beautiful. Now we'll warp forward a bit. Keeping an eye on this, we probably need to do occasional adjustments to it. Indeed. Yeah, in general, this is going to be awkward. <laughs> We might actually want to do the actual docking with this, now that I think about it. Uh, that's going to be really awkward, too. Realistically. Okay, I'm just doing a corrective RCS burn. Unfortunately, that does change our angling here a bit. But for now, we're going to bring this all the way around. Beautiful. And we'll freeze here. Okay, bringing this over. We're going to kill our relative velocity here pretty soon. Yeah, let's go ahead and kill it here. So we'll just lock to retrograde. Cool. So there we go. And now I'm going to turn RCS on. We're going to point at the, uh, at the target, or rather away from the target here for right now. There we go. And I'm simply going to burn us using RCS towards the target a little bit here. Cool. Going to change the actual heading of the burn. And freeze physics. Okay. So in we go. We are, of course, going to have to flip around. And that's understood. So we're going to start doing that now. I'm going to physics warp as we get a little bit closer and come on in here. Not having a reaction wheel makes this a lot more awkward. No doubt about that. Okay. There we go. We're basically bang on target right now. We're just slowly drifting our way here. Doing minute RCS adjustments. But we do need to come up over this direction a little bit. Okay. We'll call that good for now. And we're warping in a little bit closer. There we go. And let's come to a halt here. Or close to one. Just uh, adjusting our actual trajectory here a bit. And there we go. That's basically halted. Next, we need to set this guy as our target. But I'm going to swap over here and we're going to set this as our target. And we're going to control from here. Now we're going to roll until we are facing 
here. That's going to make things a lot easier for us. Cool. Now we swap back over here. And we rotate over. There we go. And now I want to push in a little bit here. Something along the lines of that. Hopefully that's close enough that docking forces can take it from there. That's the idea here. Just making very slight adjustments here. I think it is close enough. But we're definitely a little bit off. Let's see about docking forces. Yeah, it's the angling. Okay. Back it off slightly. Okay, we need to rotate it this way. And bring it in like that. Okay, I definitely accelerated a little much there. <laughs> cool. So with that in mind, Let's bring ourselves to a halt. I want to face target retrograde here. We're going to have to try this again. Oh, this is very awkward without without uh, a reaction wheel. Okay. We're killing the relative speed here. There we go. And now I want to point us correctly here. This is pointing away, so we just want to bring this all the way on around and point it like so. Okay. There we go. Now, I'm spinning us a little bit here. We're going to try to head in again. At a relatively okay speed. SAS off, please. Okay. Now we need to come in about like this. Let's bring it on in. We're just slowly turning over here, and that is exactly what I want it to do. Keep turning. Keep turning. Looking good. Making a very slight adjustment here. Now we hold here-ish. Decelerating us a bit. Docking forces. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that was awkward. <laughs> no doubt about that. But we're not quite done yet. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to have... We don't have an engineer up here yet, so we can't actually solidify this. I do want to strut these into place with the struts that we brought up here. But we need to ditch this. So we undock here. And this guy... SAS on. It has absolutely no way to steer other than gimbling. I just realized that. We're going to have to wait for it to just drift, drift free here. And then we're going to need... It has no power. Yeah. I didn't think of that, did I? <laughs> well, like I said, this is only a uh, personal goal. This is not specified by the contract. So I guess we have some space junk here that we'll have to untrack. I think we have some anyway. But there's our science module here, and we're going to need to send up our operations module next. So that'll be fine. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, James, Shadow Wolf, and Lohan80, Rogue Corvid, Kentogan, Andy Magar, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman12 UK, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button, 
down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time. Wait, why did that run out of power that quickly? That's kind of insane, right? Well, I guess I did warp for a while. Okay, <laughs> see you all next time.